Hey, welcome back to part two of Business by His Design. So happy to have uh, Chris Hunter with us again uh, for part two. If you want to watch part one, just click on this image to the right. Please like and subscribe below. Please subscribe below. Here is part two with Chris Hunter of Business by His Design. Now let's go. Hey, this is Greg McAfee, and welcome to The Greg McAfee Show. Now let's get started. Sometimes it takes a, uh, a health issue or a disaster or, or something to shake people up. I mean, yep. it made me think, uh, it made me think different. Um, just like John Maxwell, I said, God gave me another opportunity to live. And not everybody gets that. I lost a good friend, started a heating and air conditioning company two years before me. And we were, we were competitors, but we were close. And he started having chest pains in a HVAC seminar in Columbus, Ohio, uh, finished the seminar, drove home, and uh, his wife took him to the hospital and they got to the hospital and the emergency room was packed. And he goes, you know, I don't want to wait in this. I'm feeling better. Let's let's go home. And he was laying on a couch that night and fell off dead. So had a massive heart attack, 99% blockage uh, of his widow maker. So oh, he didn't get an, he didn't get an opportunity. He didn't get another chance. And uh, I don't know why I got one, but there's got to be a reason. And my second chance is going to be, I'm going to do things differently than I had in my first round. Um, just like you were saying to make more of an impact, help more people, but I'm not sitting still. I'm not, I'm not done yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, we are so aligned. That That's exact same focus I've, I've got now. I wake up every morning, thank the Lord for another day. And then when I go to bed at night, I'm like, uh, yes, thanks again for letting me have this one. Cause I know what every day is a gift. Amen. Amen to that. How to, how do you uh, integrate your Christian values in the day-to-day -day operations of your business, even when things go bad? I mean, we have bad days, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, so really, and, and we say Christian values here, but how does someone uh, integrate any value into a business, right? I mean, how do you do this? Well, to me, that means first, you've got to have them clearly identified. You know, what what are our values here? But then second, even more important, you have to live these out. You, you can't have a bunch of values or mission statement on the, on the wall, and then you go out and you do something totally different. So to me, it's identifying uh, and then living them out. And then three was any chance that I could get as a leader to bring these to life with the day-to-day -day actions that we were doing, that's what I tried to do. I tried to, to, with all of our values, but so there was, there was one Bible verse in particular, whenever that really hit me, it's kind of like a life verse people talk about, you know, but I, I use this even in my, my mission of my business, but uh, Colossians 3 23, and it says, you know, whatever you do, do it with all your heart as if you're working for the Lord and not for men. So for me, that spoke to me that like, OK, whatever I do, whether that means I'm doing a, a tune up on an air conditioner, whether that means I'm sweeping the floor, whether that means I'm giving a big company meeting to, you know, everyone in the company, do it with all my heart as if I'm working for Lord, for the Lord and not for just the people. And, and it was truly a form of of worship if, if you do it right. right. So if I'm on a tune up and I could take a uh, cut a corner, whatever, you know, I mean, I, I, yeah, that's probably clean. I don't need to take that cover off and really dig in there, crawl across the attic to really check that. Yeah, we could do that. But with this, this first to me, we had even a uh, wristbands that, you know, said Hunter super Text, and it had that Colossians three twenty three on there. And I, I purposely passed them out. I would wear it as a reminder to myself that, Oh wait, yeah, we're, we're not just doing this, uh, for this customer, I'm doing it for a bigger purpose. And if I do it right, it's a form of, of worship uh, and, and can have all kinds of other rewards as well. So, so communicate, clearly define your values, uh, 
I built that into the end of the company, into the mission statement, you know, all of that stuff, but then live them out and then recognize them whenever you see somebody doing one of those values. Well, for another example, you know, the going the extra mile, this is a biblical principle or a, a story in the Bible about, you know, going the extra mile. So for us, we had an extra mile award. And what I would do every month it was anytime somebody went the extra mile, uh, they would get nominated by a peer and then we would write it up on the whiteboard. And then at the end of the month, we'd celebrate this and we would recognize all these extra miles. And then we would pick a prize or, you know, we had some different things we would do. But the point was what gets measured and recognized gets repeated and improved uh, so for us, we wanted these values to get uh, repeated and improved. So we had to measure them and recognize them. Um, so that that was that's kind of a, how I would advise somebody to integrate any value into a business uh, like that. Yeah, that's awesome. That's good stuff. And, you know, I thought about when you were saying that, I also thought, you know, we all have people that leave us. Not everybody's going to stay with you forever. But no. the people that leave here, the people that leave there, they now know the way. They now know of the way, and they know that they know how to do it right. So yeah, you're not you're not hurting our industry by running a Christian business. You're helping our industry, um, yes, because you're you're not cutting corners. You're doing things right, and you know we all. I often say I'd rather give it to you than take it from you. I mean, yeah, do it right or not do it. So well, uh, you you know, you hit something there too. I mean, if um, anybody that proclaims anything uh, in business, you're gonna you're gonna come under fire, right? So I mean, we would take shots, yeah, whatever from uh, from competitors. Uh, oh, they have that Bible verse on their arm or whatever. I mean, so we heard all this stuff. But for me, when you when we messed up, that was the time. Honestly, I felt like we could demonstrate our values more than ever, because we're all going to mess up. You know, no one's going to do it perfect every time, but I, we try to demonstrate, you know, okay, we might all not always get it right, but we're always going to make it right. And, you know, no matter what, at the end of the day, I wanted us to to represent and make things right and, and do whatever the, I, I told our team all the, all the time, if, if you always do what's right, you'll never be wrong. And, and I'll always have your back no matter what. So if that meant giving money back or that meant going back and doing something for free or whatever it was, uh, just always, always do the right thing. And and the rest of it comes out in the wash. Absolutely. I don't we don't even want someone to think that we did them wrong. So, yeah, my, one of my first words out of my mouth is it appears if we give them our money back, they can't give them their money back. They can't complain about us. Yeah. They can keep their money because I don't even, I don't, I don't want to, not only don't do I want a reputation like that. I don't even want someone thinking like that. So I just right. need it fast. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. We'll go on to, uh, I like this question. Uh, Cause I get asked, uh, are mentioned a lot, but are there specific biblical principles that guide your attitude towards success? And is, is being successful a sin? Yeah. Yeah. Good one. So yeah. And, and people think profits uh, it, just cause you're a Christian based business. Uh, oh, I can't believe you charge that or, or, well, I can't believe you don't charge that because I mean, if, 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 if God is, put this business as a, and I'm the manager of it, right? I mean, these resources, this talent, all these technicians, all this ability to serve, uh, and I don't make a profit with it, then then there's something wrong there as well, right? Because with the profits, now we can, we can give back, we can invest more in the team. So absolutely, it's not a sin to, for, to be successful and to make a profit. In fact, I think it would almost be a sin uh, or at least a, a big failure not to make a profit uh, or at least take the steps to to improve the business to to make a profit. So and, the, and as far as the principles go, I mean, the like I said at the beginning, any anybody that's in business, if you if you want to if you want to serve well, 
if you want to do the right thing by customers, if you want to grow the business, these are all biblical principles. You know, I mean, if you think about it, you know, it's the it's doing the right thing. It's uh, servant leadership. But I, I love to study uh, Jesus and his leadership model the the most. I mean, so me as the, as the leader of our company, I'm like, all right, how how would Jesus handle this? Uh, what did he do to grow his business, you know, per se, grow the the faith? So, I mean, some of the greatest leadership lessons and principles come right from right from the Bible and learning how, you know, he gathered a small few. He had the he had his inner circle and uh, really poured on into them and then let them go out and empowered them to, to do even more. Uh, that's what I tried to do as, as well with that. But that, that is a great question about the, the prophets, because. People are all the time asking, you know, wow, I can't believe you charged this. I thought you were thought you were a Christian. <laughs> well, OK, well, it's not quite quite as simple as doing a nonprofit. We have to we have to be profitable if we want to provide for our team, uh, their families, the community, uh, all these things. It's just our responsibility. It is. And it's fun. I, I, you know, it's just fun to me. It's, it's a calling. It is a calling to be a, a to run a business and yeah. successful and to be a Christian at the same time. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had a, uh, I'm going to put it up on the screen here uh, during the show, but I had a picture behind my desk for years and I'd still have it there, but my new office has bookshelves behind me. Uh, but it was a picture. It's an older picture of a uh, businessman sitting at a desk and Jesus is sitting across from him, giving him counsel. And, yeah. uh, and that's, I mean, that's that's me. I want to take counsel. Everything we read, um, my devotionals, my leadership devotionals, my leadership Bible. Um, you know, someone said, let me get that over there. Someone said uh, they'd look at that picture and they go, well, that wouldn't that be nice if Jesus could come down here and just sit across from you? And it would be. It would be awesome if he was live right there. But guess what? He's live right here. Yeah. When you read this word, it becomes alive. And you get good counsel. Jesus wasn't a businessman, but he can still yeah. coach and counsel business people today better than anyone. I'm I'm telling wow. you. So that's funny you mentioned the leadership Bible. That's my go-to as well. Uh, John Maxwell had a leadership Bible. I went to it at an event one time and and I read it or started reading it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a everything that I could ever think of or came across in business. There was a lesson uh, in there and it helped me connect the dots back to exactly what you're just talking about. And then I also the, the go to for me is uh, I use the Version Bible app all the time. I mean, I start my day off with a, a devotional in there. I'm I'm uh, daily. That's one of my daily disciplines, how I start my morning every day was with a, a daily devotional. I want the first thing I do. When my feet hit the ground, the first thing I do is thank God for another day. The second thing I do is start putting his word into my head right away. Just let's let's get some positive things going or at least some truth going yes. uh, right away. And that that's how I start. But the uh, the leadership Bible, I think, is, is a must. The Version Bible app, the reason why I love it is every time that I have a issue in, in business, personal, whatever, I go to the search function and I can type it in like, you know, a uh, grappy employee or, uh, you know, uh, unhappy customer, whatever it may be. And poof, I can get uh, all these resources that point me back to the way that I should be handling things. Or And most of the time, Greg, you'll know this. It's the opposite of what I want to do. Uh, but it's funny how that works. I'll give you another quick example. Um, and this, and this is talking about, you talk, you mentioned, wouldn't it be great if, if Jesus could just consult you all the time? Well, and he can, he does that even through the, through the Holy spirit can prompt you to do things. But I remember one time just having this big, like, I can't believe I've been forgiven for all that I've done. You know, I'm just so thankful. I can't believe Jesus would forgive a guy like me. And then here I was looking at our accounts receivable. And I'm like mad at these people. My gosh, that why didn't they pay me? You know, we did this work. They deserve to pay me. And they did. Don't get me wrong. But at this moment, I had this prompt. I'm like, you know what, Chris, you're pretty, you're hanging on to this pretty hard. You should probably uh, take, and I think we took the top five biggest ones and use this as a learning thing for your team. So I called my, my team in, my inner office, inner team there. I'm like, all right, 
here's the deal. I'm stressing about this way too hard. These people owe us this money, hadn't paid us in a long time. Uh, yet here I am so thankful for being forgiven for all that I've done. Let's take this opportunity. Let's take these top five people. Let's call them and then let's write them a letter if they don't answer us and let them know that, hey, uh, it, it's Christmas. Uh, we've been forgiven of a lot. I'm offering this to you paid in full, no strings attached. Uh, you know, God bless you. And and we did that. And I sent it off. Who knows? I don't even know if the people got it, if they didn't. But it, for me, this huge weight was lifted off of me. And it was it was back to the opposite of what I wanted to do. But it was a, a point for me to to listen to what God said, even though it didn't make business sense at the time. But truth be known, I was never going to collect this money. These, these were old accounts. It was things that and I was just harboring this. So listening to, to the Holy Spirit telling me to do it, turning it into a learning experience for our team. And who knows, maybe those letters reach those people. And I, who knows? That wasn't my responsibility at that time. I was just doing what God called me to do. So, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. That, uh, well, that reminds me of my pastor. Our pastor just uh, preached a message and it was about scattering the seed. And he would walk around, he would walk around the podium or the uh, front area, and he was acting like he was throwing out seed. He said, it's not my responsibility where the seed falls. All I'm supposed to do is scatter it. That's and it. It, it might fall on hard ground, it might fall on rocky ground, or it's going to fall on fertile ground. But it's not yeah. my responsibility where it falls. Uh, and same here. I mean, it's my responsibility now to be a uh, good steward of my property, of our of God's property, rather. And it's my responsibility to witness, give the best witness I can. Uh, yeah. And and it's and I feel led ever since that meeting uh, to pray. I pray a lot. I ask for prayer requests. We get yep. 75% of the hands go up for prayer requests today. Uh, yeah, man. It's powerful. And uh, But it's not my job to worry about where it falls. It's just my job to do it. That's it. The prayer request thing is such a subtle way to, to open that door. Right. I mean, cause everyone at some point in time will take prayers, whether they're a believer or not, they're, they're just desperate. Hey, yes, please pray for me. But it opens that door. Uh, and I saw this with customers as well. So, I mean, we, we had an open, open policy to, to, Pray for customers if they so choose to, you know, let us or wanted us to do that. I even put it on our website one time. I'm like, all right, let's take prayer requests. And, you know, we can uh, join in and pray for customers and other customers could as well. And and uh, and but it was just a wasn't necessarily a uh, it's just a subtle way to leave the door open to be a good witness and and to really make a difference with it by by taking it to the one who can make a difference. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I I felt impressed a few years ago to put something on our website, and it's just a little prayer logo. When you click on it, it takes you to a page if you want to leave your prayer request. And See, yeah. uh, we get, I mean, we don't get hundreds, but we get a few a month where yeah. seri people are serious about praying for a loved one or praying for a situation. And I have about five different people that I send that to, and we all pray for them. So it's pretty good stuff. Well, I, I tell you what, so that right there is so powerful because the the follow up, I can remember following up with some customers that had had given a prayer request, and I I would I would take some time, I would call them back, you know, a few months later and just check in on them. Hey, you know, I saw we were you asked us to pray for your husband, he was sick, and I just wanted to call and check back in on you. And I remember one day um, the the guy that sold us the TV advertising, he was in the building. And, and I was on the phone, I was calling these customers back and he popped his head in. He's like, man, I don't want to be nosy, but, uh, he said, man, that that's pretty impressive. You know, that you're, you're doing that. You're calling them back. I'm like, well, I'm just, just trying to check back in. It means the world to the customer, the, the, the relationship between us and the customer at that point in time is beyond about heat and air. And he was like, that's what I'm thinking. He said, I thought you guys were just a heat and air shop, but you know, this is truly relationship building here. Right. Fast forward two or three years, the guy ends up coming to work for us. You know, I mean, because he he saw that and he he wanted to wanted to be a part of something that that did something like that. So it's all about these relationships. It is. It's all about relationship. Everything we do in our industry is about relationships. Uh, we uh, 
real quick, I just talked to someone the other uh, yesterday on a po- or this week on a podcast, which was probably yesterday. And uh, mm-hmm. I said, uh, you know, today when we hire trainees or technicians, we put them through soft skills first because soft skills is dealing with people. Um, yep. When we did it the opposite way, we would spend a lot of time and a lot of money on the technical side, and then only to find out some of them were not people persons and they didn't work out well. So yep. we now do the people thing first. And if we can get through that, they pass that, we'll train the rest. Heck uh, yeah. So that's how important it is to have build relationships with people. That's the, uh, no, I mean, they do. And, and you never know where those relationships are going to lead to in the future. You know, I mean, it, it's amazing to now that I've got a few years on me to kind of see the the fruit, I guess you could say, of all these uh, relationship seeds that were sowed along the way. Uh, it's 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 overwhelming sometimes. It's just uh, like, man, yes, this is awesome. So we'll uh, ask one more question and then see if anything else you'd like to add. But uh, what what kind of advice would you give to an aspiring Christian entrepreneur who really wants to integrate faith into their business, hasn't done it before? What would you say to them today? Well, I mean, the it. it it really goes down to why they're why they're doing this. OK, I mean, so don't do it if because you heard a podcast and heard Greg McAfee and Chris Hunter talking about, hey, yeah, business is great if you do this. That's not the right reason to to do it at all. Right. So, I mean, it. but if, if they truly feel convicted and they realize that, hey, this is I'm just the manager. I'm the re, of the resources God's blessed me with what can I do with this business, which is a big, huge part of a tool, uh, you know, in this journey of life to make a difference with. So I, I would, and then if they're, if they do it for the right motive and the right reason, I would encourage them to be bold, you know, go, go in with it and, uh, and trust God to the outcome, you know, and it does not mean you have to be perfect, uh, even in business, like we were talking about, but it, it means you're going to make it right. If, if it's not, even in your personal life, uh, I'm by far means not perfect. I mean, it's not even about a re- religion per se. It's about a, a faith and and trusting in in God and and to do the do the right thing, and He will honor the outcome. So, really, examine the motive. If the motive is there because you realize it's all His anyway, might as well uh, uh, use this tool. I would say go all in. One thing though, Greg, that that's been huge for me. Um, it's just the priority, priority list. So I, if I ever give like a public talk or what have you, I, and, and I remind myself of this often, but you know, I'm, I'm Chris Hunter, a Christ follower, a husband, a father, a grand, a grandfather. And then I'm a champion for the trades and business leader. And when I keep things in that order, man, things seem to, to work out in, in a favorable way. When I get some of those orders mixed up, uh, that's when trouble seems to find me, you know? So, so, and if that truly is the order of your life and your motives, go all in, be bold with it. Why not? You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's all uh, his anyway. Amen. And speaking of being perfect, Deion Sanders said in his testimony, God didn't call me to be perfect, but he did call me to be present. That's it. And we're got we got to be present and we got to powerful. What a uh I don't I it, regardless if you're a Dion fan or a uh, or a Colorado Buffalo, Buffalo fan, I got to tell you it, it as a business leader, I love study me and you both. We love football, we love studying coaches, you know, because they it's just like business. They're they're having to build a brand, recruit, uh you know, then teach and then go and execute. So regardless if you're a fan of his or not, the guy has done some amazing things there. He has flipped flipped a brand, a whole program. He's done it by honoring honoring God first, uh, and, and he had success and he had failures. But guess what? He remained consistent with his messaging. And I, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of what they're doing there. And and uh, if as a business owner or business leader, you ought to pay attention because talk about learn how to recruit uh, and retain. He's 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 done it. They were sold out before the first game, and they haven't yeah. been, they haven't been sold out in ten years. 
Yeah, no one cared about Colorado football no. before that. So, yeah. So, uh, and I, actually, I'm going to post the uh, testimony. I'll post a link to that if anybody wants to watch it. So, Chris, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for your time, man. It was a blessing. Uh, God is good. Um, if you'd like, put in a plug real quick for Go Time. If you want to give us a brief on what do you guys do, who do you work with, and, yeah. and a little bit of that. So after after selling my company in 2018, um, I'm not done yet either, Greg. You know our our job is to create and cultivate, right? So I'm I'm still helping grow and create. So at Go Time Success Group, I'm a partner in that. And we build technicians. We got a technician training school. Then we've got a whole other side of the business that does software implementation for for companies uh, and stuff like that as well. It helps them optimize their software. So uh, I love being a part of GoTime. There's all kinds of training classes there. Uh, also, the software help. If they go to GoTimeSuccessGroup.com, they can see it, everything we're doing. But I'm also involved with Service Titan. I've been there for four years as the principal industry advisor. So for me. It's it's kind of like the 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 way to give back to our industry plus stay really close to all the the data, the trends, the best practices, who's the best out there, what can I learn from them, then help the service titan team understand that information and build something that works and then also spread it to other contractors. So uh, I get to do a lot of work with service titan as well. So both of them uh, really fun to work at, work with. Uh, great people, totally different than operating my own company as the sole owner at Hunter Super Tex, uh, but that's a that's a whole other discussion in itself. Sure, yeah, we've been with Service Titan since January, and we love it. I wish I would have done it years ago. Yeah, uh, really I'm telling you, when, when your name came across, they were they were super excited because they they had been uh, wanting yeah. you to become a customer for a long time. They knew they knew what an impact they could help you make. Yeah, and, and they did. Okay. Hey, thanks again. Thanks for your time, Chris and uh, our listeners. I hope you guys listen to this and, or watch it rather. And God speaks through you through this because that's what it's all about. And uh, when he does, you will know it. And uh, you never know where he's going to lead you or what he wants you to do, but be ready. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Have a great, have a great day. All right. Thanks, bud. Thanks. We'll see you. Okay, folks. What an incredible interview with Chris Hunter. A big thanks to Chris for being part of our show. If you're watching on YouTube, remember to like and subscribe. Support the podcast by rating and reviewing on iTunes or your preferred listening platform. Keep listening. I'll keep challenging you. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at The Greg McAfee Show. No spaces, no underscores. Thanks for tuning in. And as always... Carry on. God bless. We're not guaranteed another day, so make it a great day.